pretty soon now, London's going to be in the Southern Hemisphere. Not because London's moving, but because the magnetic poles are going to flip upside down. With it due to flip any day now, most of us are starting to decide who to invite to our magnetic field flipping parties. I'm going to invite no one. Because the pole flip is going to take a really inconveniently long period of time, like hundreds of years. On average, pole flips happen every 200,000 years, but the last one was a massive 800,000 years ago, so we're sort of really overdue a flip. And also, since Roman times, the magnetic field strength of the Earth has halved. So we're sort of well on the way, maybe. We've all been to the centre of the Earth before, so we all know that that's where the magnetic field is coming from. It's all that delicious molten iron spinning around in a circle. So the direction of rotation causes the direction of the magnetic field. So you might think that the molten iron would always rotate in the same direction as the Earth, but sometimes it doesn't. In some ways, the iron behaves a bit like cars driving around this vast chaotic roundabout. So most of the time, the cars will drive in the same direction, and that system is pretty stable. Except every now and then it starts to get a bit clogged up. And when that happens, sometimes you get a few rebels together that want to drive in the other direction. And most of the time the rebellion fails and, you know, the cars keep going in the same direction. But sometimes enough of the rebels get together that they manage to usher in a whole new era of driving around a roundabout. The other direction. No one really quite knows what it'll be like when the magnetic fields actually flip upside down. So if you're going to plan a party, plan it mysteriously. Build up your balloons slowly and carefully. However it does happen, we don't think it'll be that bad, because looking back into the past, when they've happened before, they don't seem to have joined up with loads of mass extinctions. Supposedly, the poles are going to wander slowly across the earth towards their new homes, so I personally will cook a full roast dinner for anyone who can keep the North Pole in their back garden for more than an hour. Some people predict that there could be multiple North and South Poles during some stages of the flip, which means there are going to be so many opportunities for the British to beat the Norwegians to South Pole number two. It's also sort of possible that the poles just won't flip at all. Sometimes the magnetic field just gets really, really weak before it then returns to what it used to be. And that's called an excursion because essentially the magnetic field is just going on a well-deserved holiday. I'm a pretty big fan of the Earth's magnetic field. I'm not ashamed of it. I mean, think about all those high energy cancer causing particles that get fired in from the sun every single day. The magnetic field deflects those towards the North and the South Pole where they collide together in the sky and release their energy as the northern lights and the aurora australis. That's our force field at work. What with the magnetic field being so useful, it might seem quite worrying that we're heading towards this weakness and this flip, but actually the atmosphere above us alone gives us the radiation defence of a four metre thick concrete wall, or a four metre thick statue of me. Most of the high energy particles coming from the sun are emitted during a solar flare, so when those events happen, keep a lot of atmosphere around you. I always do. I mean, satellites are too high up to do that, so they can't reap the benefits of the atmosphere. So satellites often get knocked out by solar flares, especially above South America, where the magnetic field strength is about half what it is above Canada. Another reason to love the Earth's magnetic field is that it actually prevents those high energy particles from the sun from blowing our atmosphere away entirely. I mean, compare us to Mars. So Mars has got solid core, which means no rotating iron, which means no magnetic field, and that's no defense from the sun's particles. And so the sun blew away most of Mars's atmosphere long ago. So if you take a glass of water and you pour it onto the surface of Mars while you're hanging out there, then it will simultaneously freeze in the cold and evaporate in the lack of atmosphere before it even hits the ground. Thanks for watching, deliciously subscribe for more!